and welcome on to this show, St. John's head coach, Mike Anderson. Mike, thanks for being here, man. How are you? Good, good. Thanks for, for having me on. Uh, been up quite early this morning, but, uh, but we're doing good. So I'm going to start you off with the real hard-hitting stuff here. You spent your career bouncing around the Deep South and the Midwest. Now that you are in New York, what has it been like getting to live in a city with real pizza? Oh, I think it's been, it's been awesome. Uh, you know, it's me and my wife. We're, uh, I guess, as you can say, we're empty nesters. So we get a chance to, uh, to come to uh, the Mecca of basketball here in New York, uh, Madison Square Garden, uh, coaching at a, a historical place in St. John's, one of the ninth winningest programs in the country. So, you know, as coaches, you, you got to know it's, a, it's no question. It's a, it's a great challenge but it's a great, great opportunity. And coach is always looking for uh, opportunities to coach uh, and do some things that people don't think they can do. And so, uh, so for me, I think uh, uh, we're, we're really enjoying it. So it feels like this is the first season where you've been in Queens, where you have some real expectations heading into the season. You're coming off a 16 and 11 campaign. You won at UConn, you beat Villanova. You got within probably a win or two of the NCAA tournament. I think you've probably realized this by now, but Johnny's fans are starved for that winner. Are you, are you kind of feeling that a little bit? I don't know if pressure is the right word, but do you, do you feel that level of excitement and expectation the fan base has? I think everywhere I've been has been that. So when you come in and you're, uh, you, you're trying to get the program up to that level where people expect it, uh, that's part of it. No one expects more out of the, you know, the program than me, myself. And so hopefully our guys, uh, one thing we've done, I know that each year we've improved. And so uh, is this the year where we really step out and uh, we finally having a, a, hopefully a, sub, a normal year because you know, the first year it got cut short on March the 12th. And then of course last year, no fans. And so, so this year we've got, uh, uh, we got a, a bunch of new cast on our basketball team and uh, and I think the, the sooner they get acclimated to one another, I think we, we got a chance to uh, to be one of the better teams uh, I know in our league. And, and our league is really, really good. So hopefully we could be one of the better teams in the country. So for me, the biggest reason why I'm excited to see you guys play this year, you have two guys on, on, on your team that have a real chance to be in that Big East Player of the Year conversation when things are all said and done. And I don't know if there's anyone else in the league that can say this. Well, so I, I want to start by talking about Posh because – he seems like he is just a miserable guy to try to play basketball against. Uh, I think, at least in my opinion, he really sets the tone for your group and the, the way that you want to play. Uh, I think I'd make the argument that Julian is the best player on your team, but I don't know if there's anybody more important or more influential than Posh Alexander. When you talk about playing up-tempo, pressure defense, uh, attacking offensively, uh, uh, Posh fits the mold, and, uh, and, and I think – we saw our team really elevate when he started getting a lot more comfortable in, in what we were doing here. Uh, guys just kind of, uh, they fed off of his energy. Defensively, I mean, he can be a one-man uh, pressing crew himself, uh, but his energy, the, how hard he plays, and, uh, and if, if you're one of those guys that's not playing as hard as he is, you stand out. So, uh, uh, but hopefully, you know, uh, this year, last year, I thought it was a freshman he, uh, he had a phenomenal year. And so now you're a target and let's see where you elevate your game because, uh, again, he's important in what we do. Yeah, never, ender, never ending energy, right? Like he can guard 94 feet for a whole game. I don't know how anybody can do that. I would be done after about two minutes. Uh, where does he rank in terms of the best on-ball defenders that you've coached? We've had some, we've had some really good ones. I, I think he puts me in the mind of you know, the kid I had, uh, uh, Squeaky Johnson. Mm -hmm. uh, you know Squeaky Johnson at UAB. He was, he was a terror, like a little gnat, like a little pest. They're like pests, is what they are. And uh, and I think uh, Pasha is, is in that mode. Uh, uh, obviously, he's he's very athletic. You know, for a guy's size, and uh, I, I just think his uh, he has that grit. You know that that I love in players, and so uh, so I'm anxious to see his progression from year one to year two. Yeah, and you got a guy, the grittiest guy on your team is named Posh. I love it. That's one of the best things about uh, about Posh to me. So I mentioned Julian earlier. You have him coming back. He went through the NBA draft process. I want to know where you were when you found out and what your celebration was when you knew that he was coming back to school. You know, the greatest thing is that we've had communication throughout this whole process, and I was 200% behind him. And, and even when he made the decision to uh, to go through the process, you know, uh, and – 
back and forth the information was being passed. Uh, uh, I probably was at home. Uh, he sent me a text first, and then, then he prefaced it, you know, Coach, uh, I, can I talk to you? Yeah, that, that's his way of saying I got something to tell you. Uh, uh, but at the same time, he was the most important recruit this year. Mm-hmm. And, uh, thank goodness, uh, uh, I think for him having the opportunity to go that, you know, I was one of those, like I said, we supported him 200%. And I think that was a big part of it, you know, to see where he is. And so, uh, and as I stated to him, if you can make the progress from your freshman year, you know, that you made coming in as a 17 year old kid to your all freshman Big East, he was all, all freshman on the rookie team. Then he goes from not only that, leading the league and scoring and first team all conference, most improved. So, Within two years, you can see the progress. And so I'm excited to see the next phase and what takes place. Uh, now we'll put him in a lot of different position, uh, positions so he can showcase even more his God gift ability. But I think with him, uh, with the understanding that, you know, the game has got to, his game has got to continue to mature. Those, hey, you got a minute to talk texts are always difficult ones because you never know if it's going to end up being good news or bad news. I'm glad that it was good news. Uh, let me ask you this one more thing about Julian. He brings a kind of veteran scoring presence and a kind of player that can go and get his own, right? There's got to be some level of uh, confidence as a coach to be able to say, like, you're at the end of a clock, you need a bucket, just go give the ball to Julian, go get us a good shot, right? There, that, that has to give you some level of confidence heading into a season. Well, with, without a doubt, and I think that's going to be the next phase of his game, you know, in the off season, that's what he's been working on. Uh, and then, of course, as we get, you know, into this new year, I think he's going to be one of the leaders. It's so funny because, you know, right at, at the end of his freshman year, you could start, you could start seeing him being more verbal out there on the floor. And then last year, uh, he, he was one of our leaders on our basketball team. So uh, with us having three guys coming back from last year's team, uh, Dylan, Wusu, Posh Alexander, and Julian Champagne. Those are the guys that are coming back. Uh, and so they've got to be kind of anchored the core uh, of this basketball team. So uh, with, with Jules, I, I think, again, I think his mindset in terms of what he's trying to get to, uh, the beauty of it is that he puts winning before any of that. Yeah, and I think that's you – know, everybody wants to win. and uh, But I think you know he's going to be important in what we do. So you mentioned that you only have three guys coming back from last year's team, but that doesn't mean you're going to be young. Like everybody else in the country, you guys spent a lot of time in that transfer portal this offseason. Uh, I want to start with, with some of the guards that you brought in, Tariq Coburn, Steph Smith, and probably to a lesser extent, Montez Mathis. It seems like one of the things you guys really targeted was some backcourt scoring pop, uh, maybe a little bit more shooting on the perimeter. Is that something? Am I reading that right? And, and why did you kind of look to guys like that? Yeah, we got older guys, number I mean, experienced guys. Now we got to get them to be experienced in playing the way we want to play. Uh, I just think, you know, Montez brings a guy with a big time motor from a winning program. These all guys are coming, you know, basically from winning programs where they were key cogs in those programs. So, uh, uh, and, and with older guys, obviously, they've been through all the, the ups and downs and things of that nature. So, there's something that they're really looking at. There, there's a reference point so, of where they're trying to get to. And I think these guys have come in with the right mindset. And, and I think it has helped, you know, even with the, the core guys. Because, you know, you look at our core guys, they're basically young guys with the exception mm-hmm. of Jules. Uh, so I thought it was important to bring in some guys who fit what we're doing. I think Montez is a strong, athletic uh, guard that can defend, that can score, can rebound, can do a lot of things. And, and we just feel that you know, in an up-tempo setting, he get a chance to showcase even his passion about He can really pass the basketball. So I'm excited about that. Steph Smith, uh, an all-conference player at Barmont. Uh, his fifth year, he's, he's an older guy, 22, almost going 23. So you got men coming in here who know what the expectations are in terms of you know what they bring to the table and they want to attain uh, uh, at a high level in the, in the Big East. And then Tariq Coburn, I, I think this, his story is so fascinating. This guy was on our campus and we didn't even know it. He was, he was getting ready to try to get into medical school at some point in time. So he was in summer school. And, uh, and so uh, I, I'm excited about him because he's a guy that can extend the floor. Uh, he's an all-conference player uh, as well at, at hospital, uh, about 6'5", athletic guard, uh, has a big time motor. And, uh, young man is from Queens and uh, I think he's going to be an excellent basketball player for our basketball team. So, again, the biggest key is is getting all those guys on the same page. 
So can can you just elaborate a little bit on Tariq's story? I know that he's entering the physician's assistant program, I believe. So how did that come about and how much time is he going to have? I, I know people that have gone to, to medical school and gone down that road. It's a lot of classwork. Oh, it is. And it's, it's kicking his butt right now. But he's <laughs> hanging in there. But he was on campus. And uh, obviously, I think with the pandemic, you know, he was worried about going overseas and playing. And so he has a fifth year. And, uh and, and of course, being here on our campus, we were able to, to visit with him. And, and sure enough, he wanted to continue to play basketball and play in the Big East. And, uh, well, I, I tell you what, I, I was pleasantly surprised when, you know, he had a chance to come and, and, and practice with our team and what he brings to the team. Really, really sharp. He was like, I think, academic All-American two years uh -huh. there uh, at Hospital. Uh, so you can see you're getting not only uh, high-level players, but high character guys as well. So let's talk a little bit about the, the front court guys you're bringing in. You got Joel Soriano from Fordham. You have Aaron Wheeler coming in from Purdue. Both of them are about 6'10, but I don't think they could be any more uh, different in the way that they want to end up playing. What are you expecting out of those guys and what do you think they can contribute this season? Well, Aaron is someone I recruited when I was, uh, you know, at, at Arkansas. I got a chance to see him play and he ended up going to Purdue and, uh, uh, I've always been fascinating with you know, his athletic ability. Uh, then, of course, he's been in, you know, over there with Matt Painter. And obviously they won at a high level. And he was a big part of that. So that experience that he had over there, hopefully it's going to really benefit us. And we can put him in a system where he can, he can have a chance to showcase and, and, and play with the confidence that I, that I know he's capable of doing. And, you know, Aaron just turned 23. So he's a man. So it, and, and even when we were watching him play, uh, it's, he plays with such, uh, he's so smooth in what he does. He does it effortlessly. So I'm just hoping that it would translate into what we're doing on the basketball court. Uh, uh, could be one of our leaders, a uh, uh, guy that can play inside, outside, about six, nine, uh, inside, outside, can guard a guard, guard a four. So he's very, very versatile. That's a fit in what we're doing. Uh, Joel, uh, uh, kid that played at Fordham, uh, averaged almost a double-double. Uh, I, I love what he brings to the table. A guy of size can give us an inside presence. Uh, has a great pair of hands. And you know, if you got a big guy with a great pair of hands and, and he can move down the floor, he's pretty mobile, uh, uh, you got a chance to work with him. He can give us a post presence in terms of scoring and, and rebounding the basketball. And that's something we hadn't had since I've been here. So uh, again, it, it adds, it's a team that's got a chance to have some quality depth, and, and that's going to be important uh, in the Big East because our, our league is really, really good. So you also added a couple of, uh, I guess, normal recruits, so to speak. Uh, you got Rafael Pinzon coming in, Drissa Traore, and a Juco transfer, Zay Naiwe. I hope I pronounced his, uh, his name correctly. Have any of them impressed you, and who's been a guy this offseason in workouts that has really kind of taken a step forward? Well, no, I'm Omar Stanley. I, I love Omar Stanley's energy. I mean, he's 6'8". I mean, he is a third and fourth, fifth effort kind of guy. Uh, I, I, I love those guys that play like junkyard dogs. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. I was kind of referenced sometimes to my, my nephew, Damari Carroll, who played for me at Missouri. And uh, Omar brings that same mindset. A great pair of hands, can run the floor, athletic. And again, a freshman just got to learn what takes place. Uh, uh, pins on, Rafael, I, 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 you know, one thing about him, he's played he played national the national team in Puerto Rico, and you can see that in his game. I mean, he's got a he got a nice flair about his game. I mean, he he won't back down from anyone. He's about six six and a half. So as a guard, he can see over people in terms of passing the basketball, distributing it, and uh, and he has a motor, and I love that. And of course, Dresa is, is a freshman who. Uh, I think in time, a quick jumper can rebound the basketball. Uh, will continue to uh, give us some quality at the forward position. Uh, Isaiah is, is a young man that set out uh, for the last year, and uh, now he gets a chance to step in and, and play with our basketball team. About six, nine and a half, long, athletic, more defensively right now than he is offensively, but a guy that I think in time will be versatile. Uh, stepping away from the basket, defensively rebounding and, and guarding and getting out in the open floor. So let me end it with this. You're probably going to end up getting picked somewhere in the top three in the Big East, maybe second, maybe third. I'm sure there's going to be people that say St. John's can go out and win the Big East. We know what the St. John's fan base is expecting and how excited they are. So 
what is in Mike Anderson's mind, what is a successful 2021, 22 season look like for St. John's? Well, I think number one, we want to, you know, obviously every year, my job, my, my mindset, I'm trying to win me a championship. That's what we, <laughs> you know, forgive me, we're going to be in the tournament. I, I don't even worry about that. I want us to improve. I, you know, the thing about it is that you set your goals, but the goal is to improve each and every day. With mm-hmm. this team here, it's a, it's a brand new basketball team. You know, last year, I didn't think we were a team that uh, we defended at the level I wanted us to defend. We could score. We shot the ball a little bit better. Uh, but I think even with this team here, we got more quality depth. I think we can, uh, we, we'd probably be more efficient in scoring. Uh, so when you talk about, you know, what, what is, go out each and every day and get better. And, and I think our teams, they play the better basketball right there at the end. They always do. And it's, it's kind of like the coming together. I always, you know, look at our team as, you know, you're putting paint on the canvas. And each time you go out, you're trying to clean it up and clean it up. And when it gets to like February, it started becoming a beautiful picture. And hopefully we can continue that momentum, you know. And of course, in a season, you got to avoid injuries. Uh, uh, that, that's always important. But uh, at the same time, you know, you want to make sure your team is playing some of the best basketball at the end. Uh, I'm excited about it. And as I said, we want to be one of the top teams in our league, no question about it. And so, uh, I'm, I'm very, very excited about it, and uh, uh, I believe we're going to be in the hunt for something, uh, hunt for something special. I think, and uh, so, so we look forward. But I, as I told our guys this morning, let's control what we can control. That is getting better each and every day. And when we go out, we're going to got a great non-conference schedule, and obviously our league is really, really good. So uh, let's get better. And people are excited about it, and uh, uh, it's enough about the talking. Let's let's put the work in. Let's go to work. Well, listen, as a guy that grew up on Big East basketball, the sport is better, the conference is better when St. John's is out there making noise and has people excited. So, Coach, best of luck this season. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you, Rob. Awesome. Thanks, man. I really do appreciate it. You got it. Now go out and win something for me this year, all right? Have a good one. Okay. <laughs> Take care, man. Thank you. Before we move on, let me tell you guys a little bit about our partners over at Bet River Sportsbook. If you haven't signed up for Bet Rivers yet, now is the time because they are offering a $250 match bonus for your first deposit. But what sets them apart is that they require just one playthrough to turn your bonus into cash money. With their rush pay instant approval, withdrawing your winnings is safer, it's more secure, and it's more reliable. Now that basketball season is tipping off, Get in on the action at betrivers.com today or by downloading the BetRivers iOS app. You must be 21 years or older. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. And while I got you here, let's talk about the Field of 68 Media Network, where college basketball matters most all year round. This is a digital media and podcast network that we've been building over the course of the last year. We have shows hosted by some of your favorite players covering the program that they love the most. A.J. Guyton hosts the House of Hoosier. Eric Devendorf covers Syracuse on the scorer's table. Dan Dickow hosts the Gonzaga Bulldog broadcast. We have Florida's Patrick Young and Duke's Andre Dawkins and North Carolina's Shimon Williams and Michigan's Stu Douglas and Illinois' Deion Thomas. The list goes on and on and on. We have more than 30 shows right now. So hit the links below and check them all out. And while you're at it, make sure that you go check out the Field of Twelve. Media Network, your home for college football. That was St. John's head coach, Mike Anderson, and I'm John Fanta, now joined by our expert opinion. And this is really a fair and balanced panel for the Field of 68 St. John's Red Storm preview. We have New York Post reporter Zach Braziller with us. He's on the Johnny's Day in, in, day out. And then we have everyone's favorite for Johnny's Nation. It is Jeff Goodman, Stadium Insider with us talking Red Storm. Uh, let's start with you, Zach. St. John's coming off a 16-11 and 11 campaign last year. They were hovering around the NCAA tournament bubble. A, a loss to DePaul ends up really putting them backwards and, and ending that thought. What are the expectations for St. John's this season? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty simple. It, this, this has to be a tournament team. Um, they're going to be projected to finish top three, top four in this league. You know, Julian Champagny coming back really just raised the expectations. I mean, 
it's I think it's it's pretty simple. I mean, if, if this team doesn't make the tournament, it's it's a huge disappointment. Um, it's probably the most excited the fan base has been since since Mullins last since Mullins last season, if not since you know going back to Lavin. There there's real hope that this could be a big year. Jeff, do you agree? I actually do. I really do. I, I hate to agree with Zach. Um, it pains me, but I do. I agree with Zach here. I think when you've got two potential first team all league guys, which they have with Champagne and, and Posh. Now, again, the rest of the roster kind of looks good on paper and it looks better than what you lost. You lost a bunch of guys that transferred that really all transferred down. So it wasn't like they lost some, some great crew here, but you've still got to get the chemistry straight and guys like uh, Steph Smith, what's he going to be coming from Vermont where he was kind of a number one or, or number one, a option. Um, do they have enough shooting? I think Coburn was huge. I, I actually think that was like the biggest addition because he gives you another floor spacer and another score where some of those other guys, Wheeler, Mathis, they're not really shooters. Yeah. It's interesting because, Perimeter shooting has been something that at times has been a flawed area for St. John's, but we're hearing some really good things out of Steph Smith, Zach, that he could be the big addition. Yeah. I, I talking to people, I, I really, I think he's a, he's kind of a guy that has flown under the radar. You know, a lot of people are talking about Wheeler and Mathis, you know, Jeff mentions Coburn, who I do agree is to me is an underrated ad. But I think Smith is going to be huge. I, I don't know if he's going to start, but I yeah. think he's going to finish games. He's a smart player. He, you know, he kind of will play at his own, own speed. He, he's very, very different from a lot of guys they have. I think he could be someone that that is really significant. It, it is interesting, you know, because they do have so many new players. Now, like Jeff said, on paper, to me, the roster is better. But the big question is, you know, how do they mesh? Is it going to take time? Because they really only have three guys back from last year who played. So it, it is interesting. It is going to be interesting to see how how long it takes for them to kind of find themselves and, and to really get comfortable with each other. You know, well, what's interesting is Mike Anderson's system is really the epitome of it, it's not a big difference if you're starting or if you're coming in off the bench because he works a lot of guys in there. It's a high-pressure system, and it can be very different as to who finishes a game. Sometimes we poke that around with certain programs, but with Anderson, it, it really depth is a thing. It's a real thing, and St. John's has a lot of new guys, but guys that are going to play, how does that mesh? Well, here's the thing, Jeff. Posh Alexander was the first Big East player to win the conference freshman and defensive player of the year in the same season since Allen Iverson. What do you think of this kid? I, I love him. I mean, again, if he, if he gets in even better shape, I, I think he's terrific and he's poised to have a huge jump. I mean, again, you look at what he did last year as a freshman in, in a COVID pandemic. So he didn't even get a real freshman year and it's certainly a freshman off season. So I, I, I think he's a guy that's going to take a big, a big jump. Obviously again, if Champagne can take another jump and, and, He's versatile, one of the better players. He could be – I mean, listen, if St. John's finishes like second in the league, he could be – either one of them could be Big East Player of the Year. And oh, that's yeah. what you have. You have that advantage. They know the system now. Um, and, and, again, I, I think this is such a pivotal year for Mike Anderson because you saw Champagne almost leave after last year, which means likely he's going to leave after this year. OK, he was he was damn close to leaving after last year. So if you if you get in the NCAA tournament, you get some momentum and you get the monkey off your back. If you're Mike Anderson, if you don't get in, you go in a year four, probably without Champagne and with a ton of pressure on you. Zach, Champagne's the leading scorer for St. John's. Posh Alexander's the point guard, the one who really stirs the drink. Who's more important to St. John's success? Now, that's a really good question because, you know, 
it was pretty clear last year that Champagne was their best player. But I, you know, make the argument Posh was their most important player because when he played well, they were a different team last year. You know, they there were plenty of games where Champagne played well and they lost. When Posh played well, they didn't lose. So I, I think you can make the argument that Posh is their most important player because when he's got it going, when he's hitting shots from the perimeter, it's just a completely different team. Now, that's the big thing I'm looking for out of him this year is, is his shot going to be better, more consistent? Like Jeff said, last year was so, you know, it was a different type of year for a freshman. There was, there was no, you know, with the pandemic, there was a limited non-conference schedule. The preseason was truncated. There was really no offseason. Now, he's had a full offseason to really work on that jump shot. If that shot is just, you know, improved to where you don't need to be great, but where it's somewhat reliable – it just changes everything. And the other thing for him this year is, you know, last year he's playing with Rasheem Dunn, who was a guy, another guy who kind of was a slasher who really couldn't shoot. Now you'll, now you expect him to probably play a lot with Steph Smith. Who's a guy who's going to spread the floor and it's going to be harder for teams to play off posh, you know, which to me is another factor to where you could expect him to take a jump. Yeah. That's the interesting dynamic. Those two play so well together. And it's clear that they set the tone for the culture of the program. Inside the locker room, Champagne just carries this leadership role, even as a sophomore last year. Uh, let's look at the post, because one big thing that has been tough for St. John's to overcome at times is rebounding and being able to win on the glass and do it well. Well, they address that. They bring in Aaron Wheeler from Purdue. They also bring in a, a Fordham transfer in Joel Soriano. They have a couple of, of recruits that come in that present some size. Zach, will this front court be better? Yeah, I, I mean, to me, it, it's kind of hard to, for it to be worse, to be honest. I mean, when you look at the last two years where, you know, guys they brought in, whether it was Toro last year, just really didn't, didn't do much. And now you have Soriano, who, yet, yes, it's Fordham, and Fordham was one of the worst teams in the country last year. But he is a guy who does have – who can score in the post, who will rebound the ball. Like you mentioned, they have, they have freshmen coming in. Um, Wheeler is a guy that, you know, really never got a, a huge shot at Purdue, but he obviously never really put it together. They think he's going to help a ton. So, yeah, I, I think it'll be better. The question is how much better it will be, because we know the way they play, if you don't clean the glass, you can't get out in transition. And Ken Coburn, I mean, uh, Ken Soriano keep up. I mean, that's the other part with him, right? Yeah. Is he going to be in good enough shape where he can play the style that Mike Anderson wants him to play. You look at a lot of the Arkansas bigs he had, what were they? They were long, they, they were athletic, they could run, Gafford, Portis, those guys. That's not Soriano, let's be honest here. He's He's got the body of, of Zach. I mean, very similar, just, you know, a lot bigger and stronger and more athletic and tougher and all that. Wow, Jeff, nice. Um, here's the thing, though. Soriano, you're not looking – They're not. he's not going to play 30 minutes. Right. He's going to play – He's going to play 15, maybe 20 minutes. And, you know, the guy, the guy I think who's got a chance, they really like Omar Stanley's, you know, 6'9", you know, really athletic. He's a good rebounder. He's a freshman. He, they think he was underranked. He, you know, he was a three-star recruit. They, you know, I think he's a guy who you can see play a lot. You know, you're going to see a lot of Wheeler and, Ju and Champagne as your two bigs, I think. Um, but I do think I do think Soriano could help them in, in yeah. small doses. He's just he's not going to be playing 30 minutes a game. I don't I don't that would that would surprise me. You know, it's interesting because to the minutes thing, only two guys played over 30 minutes a game last year for St. John's, Champagne and Alexander. You had six players on last year's team play between 10 and 22 ish minutes a game. So that, that illustrates the whole format of the Anderson system right there. I guess uh, let's turn to this schedule, okay? And and we're still waiting for the Big East schedule. Feels like any day now. A <laughs> non-conference schedule, though. So Jeff, I'm I'm just gonna give you the the first reaction. Then we'll go. Hey, to that. hey, hold on one sec. Could, can we pause? I gotta. My computer is almost dead. I gotta charge it. Sure. Sure. Nice. This should be this should be included in the recording. Uh, let's turn from the roster to the schedule. Big E schedule is still on the way. We're still waiting for it. Could be any day. Non-conference schedule. So, Jeff, I'm going to give you the first tap at this here. 
Mississippi Valley State, yep. St. Peter's at Indiana. Okay, Gavin King. Yep. Fairleigh Dickinson, St. Francis, Brooklyn, NJIT against Kansas at UBS Arena over in Elmont. Fordham, Monmouth, Colgate, Pitt. Yeah, yeah. That's two good games and nine crappy games. That's what that is. Two resume games of which you probably have to win one of those two and nine other crappy games. Let's face it. Like, I know there's some – listen, Colgate's been great lately. They've been great, but, you know, it's not a resume game. I mean, they were – I think they were, like, top 20 in the net at one point last year, though. Uh, Monmouth, St. Peter's, Mississippi Valley State. Stay away from the Mississippi Valley States. Um, you know, Pitt's not good. I mean, they're better, but they're not good. Fordham will stink again. So, really, Indiana, I think, will be a top 25-ish team. Kansas will be a top 10 team. They get them in New York. That's the one you got to win. You got to be Kansas in New York uh, at home, you know, because at Indiana, that's a tough task to win in Bloomington. Um, and they're a veteran team. Hmm. Yeah, it's not a good schedule. No. I, no. I'm very just, just, it's just not. I mean, like you said, there are two good games. I, I get they committed to Pitt early and, you know, a few years ago, but it's, there's no like UConn's playing St. Bonaventure. I don't. That's the game. That's a game St. John should have tried to play. Hundred yes, percent. There. Is that uh, why? Well, my question is why is why did they schedule this way? I mean, I've I've asked a bunch of times, and I was told, well, we've got you know we're playing twenty league games, and so we're gonna have twenty three high major games, and they think the schedule is good, uh, is at least good it enough. Puts pressure. I, it puts a lot of pressure to yeah. finish in the top four in the big East, because if you're fifth yep. and you go for two against Indiana and Kansas, right. If you're fifth, you might not get in. I mean, honestly, you might not get in. Cause I, I think you got to win one of those two. Did we just lose him? Unbelievable. All right. It's time for everybody's favorite topic recruiting. And this one is hotly discussed. And when Mike Anderson took over, the immediate question was, New York ties, can he recruit locally? Is he going to be able to, to make waves with AAU teams, with high school teams? What's he going to put together with his staff? Well, eight New York guys on this upcoming year's team. He just secured a commitment. They beat out Seton Hall for Jaquan Sanders from our savior Lutheran uh, in the Bronx. Jeff, this was a question. I know it's something that you asked. It's something that you were critical on when Mike Anderson was hired. What say you now? Yeah, I, listen, I did not and think it was a good hire when he got hired. Now, again, on to its own, I didn't think it was a good hire. Then I wanted to see what the staff and, and he hired Van Macon and, and Steve DeMeo. Uh, DeMeo is now gone, replaced by Shoes, Greg Vitrone. Uh, but he's done a good job. And, you know, frankly, he's done a good job because of those two guys. Let's be honest here. If you don't hit it with Champagne and Posh, we're not talking like this. But you get two Brooklyn kids. They've been terrific, uh, whether it was evaluating, whether it was developing, whatever you want to call it, they, they've, they've hit it in those two guys. So it's hard to be critical. Now, what I will say is just because they have eight guys from New York doesn't mean you have eight good guys from New York. Like, let's see. You know you have two. They're definitely hit two. I don't know how many they missed last year on from New York that are now gone. But again, done better than I thought because he hired two New York guys or, or New York area guys and now replaced the mail with another guy who's got good ties and is well liked in the area. So uh, I, I think, again, it's hard to be critical. I'm not willing to say, listen, I'm still not willing to say Mike Anderson was this great hire yet. I'm not. Now, I'm, I'm certainly. I'm closer to probably having to eat some crow if they make the tournament and maybe get a win. But I, I've also said Mike Anderson needs to do more than Chris Mullen. Okay. Like just getting in, in the, you know, the first four doesn't mean you, you've been successful. Like you've got to win and, and, and get to where you're relevant consistently. And it's not just the one-off if you sneak, sneak your way into the NCAA tournament this year. Zach. Recruiting thoughts on this program right now? 
Um, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so far, I've done a good job locally. You know, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about it. Um, now he's got to get some, you know, continue to do this. Now, I think the, the, the addition of AJ store was really big for them. There's no question about it. This was their first top 100 guy. You know, shoes was actually really big in this. He had a connection to the kids AU program. So that to me is something that, you know, needs to needs to be included in this. Now they get Sanders, you know, who's from the same, you know, high school a, a, as Posh. And, you know, I think, I also think, you know, Dylan Adai Wusu, who came with Posh, is going to be a good player. He was Solid. a decent as a freshman and, you know, but yeah, like to me, it's all about, about, about Posh and Champagne. And look, neither one of these guys was thought of as a huge recruit at the time. Can become a huge player for them. And Posh was a guy who at one time was top 100, but he fell off. He broke his arm. And, and now here you are. And, you know, they've, they've done well locally, but like Jeff said, I, it's not like they're getting top 50 guys from, from, from locally. So. All right, let's go rapid fire here with some big picture thoughts. Zach, fact or fiction. St. John's is the best program in the New York, New Jersey area this season. That's a fact. I think, I mean, there are a lot of questions with Seton hall. There are, you know, Rutgers lost their, to me, their best offensive player in, in young last year and their best defender in Johnson. I, you know, I think Rutgers is probably an IT team this year. I'm sure a lot of Rutgers fans are going to want to, you know, yell at me about that, but I, I don't quite see it with Rutgers. I think Seton hall can make the tournament, maybe sneak in, but to me, there's, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of doubts about that team with so many new guys I look St. John's has the two best players in the metropolitan area. I, I will say that right now. I think Champagne and Posh are better than anyone else from the metropolitan area. You want to give me Jared Roden. You want to give me Geo Baker. You know, that's fine, but that's just, that's just my opinion. All right, Jeff, St. John should be in the top three of the big East preseason Paul. Yeah, absolutely. Fact. I mean, you, you got to go to me, Villanova clear. Number one, I would go UConn at number two. Only because, again, I feel like I know they lost book night. I understand if you're if you're picking a team, you're taking St. John's as top two. You're taking those guys one and two, probably in a in a draft, even you know over Tyrese Martin or whoever. Um, but I like UConn's depth. I, I like them. They bring back more. There's more continuity there overall with sure. UConn. So I will go UConn uh, ahead of you know St. John's. And to answer the other question that you hit Zach with, I think it's a flip of the coin right now between, you know, it's not a flip of the coin. You can throw them all in a, in a, in a hat between Rutgers, Seton Hall, St. John's. But Zach's right. The bottom line is you're going to go with the St. John's Red Storm here <laughs> because they do have the top two players in Champagne and Posh. So, yes, I'm going with St. John's. Look at that. Look at that hat. It's, it's great. It belongs to Karnaseka Arena in, like, the second row. Are, are you going to get to a game this year, Jeff? I mean, are you going to get to some games? Because Johnny's fans would love to meet you in person. Yeah, I, I, I am. I'm going to get there. Uh, I'd like to get there for the Kansas game. I don't remember what the date is off the top of my head for that game, but that's the one I'd like to get. I mean, Zach's trying to get me for, like, St. Peter's or Mississippi Valley State and some of these <laughs> games. Like, I'm not wasting a day coming to watch and play the Sisters of the Poor here. I'm going to watch a watch real the game. telecast, watch the broadcast that, that I could do that I could do, but the Kansas game's the one I want to get to or big East game. Uh, obviously last year, we weren't able to really get to any games. So I, I am looking forward to getting there this year. Yeah. Friday night, December 3rd, it's kind of nice. St. John's in Kansas. They're going to play on a Friday night, you know, and it, it, college hoops just has so much going on on Saturday. There's not Love as that. much Friday night action. So that's going to be a real, like, not only is that going to be St. John's resume chance, that's going to be the chance for the nation to watch St. John's. That's right. Yep. That's going to be a huge night for this program. Zach, let's go big picture here, okay? This program has not won an NCAA tournament game in over two decades. 
I mean, you, you'd have to go back to 2000 as the last time the Red Storm won an NCAA tournament game. Well, there you have it. We want to thank Zach from Tiller from the New York Post. You can follow him at nypost.com, also on Twitter. And, of course, Jeff Goodman from Stadium. That is the complete breakdown of the St. John's Red Storm. Thank you for joining us. You can check out our other content, our previews, our podcasts leading up to the season on the field of 68.